us listen to the word of God. Mark chapter 1. Verses 14 and 15. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the gospel from God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Grace and peace, my dear brothers and sisters. We were listening the God's love and the importance of forgiveness. And this scripture we are listening, the importance of repentance, the first message of our Lord Jesus, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As we know, Acts chapter 2, verses 37 to 40, after the Pentecost experience, St. Peter was preaching the word of God. And all the people gathered there. They were asking to St. Peter and to the brothers, what shall we do? And St. Peter replied, you must repent. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The repentance is the key through which we can enter into the heavenly gate. We can open the heavenly gate. Through repentance, we can experience his power. That's why Mark says, Repent and believe in the gospel. Without repentance, nobody can believe in the gospel. So we need repentance. And what is repentance? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 to 11, St. Paul explains there are two kinds of repentance. One is worldly repentance and one is godly repentance. So we all need godly repentance through the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16, verse 8. When the Holy Spirit touches, we will experience the sorrow about our sins. And that is, that should come from within. It's not something external. That's why Prophet Joel says in Joel chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, our Lord is inviting each one of us. We listen to that word, Joel chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. But now declares Yahweh, come back to me with all your heart, fasting. So our Lord is inviting each one of us, come back to me with all your heart, fasting, weeping, mourning. Tear your heart, not your clothes. Come back to Yahweh, your God. For he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in faithful love. We heard a merciful God. He is ready to forgive all our sins. Our Lord is inviting each one of us, come back to me with all your heart. No, not with half heart, full heart we should give. That's what our God is asking from each one of us. It is internal. It should happen in our heart. Jeremiah chapter 4 verses 1 to 4. The men of Judah and Jerusalem, our Lord is inviting, circumcise your heart. The real change required in our heart. That's what the message says. Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29, St. Paul explains this. The real circumcision is a circumcision in the heart. Inwardly, we should change. That's what our Lord is asking from each one of us. A real change should happen. It is very easy to, to show externally. We can change our dress or change. We can show something externally, but God is looking into our heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Our Lord asking from each one of us. Our Lord is speaking to each one of us. Change your heart. I know what you are. Revelation chapter 3, verses 19 to 21 says, Revelation chapter, we can write from 16 to 21. This is our state, Revelation chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. And especially read from 17 onwards. You say to yourself, I am rich, I have made a fortune. And very often we say, I don't need any change, I am good. But what our Lord says, we'll listen to that. 
and have everything I want, yes. never realizing, never realizing the fact that you are wretchedly and pitiably poor. You are wretchedly, pitiably poor. That is our state. If you deeply look into our soul. And again, Prophet Jeremiah says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, what is the most wretched thing on earth? Our heart. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, and says, Lord knows your heart. Nothing is hidden from him. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. We'll listen to that. The heart is more devious than any other thing. Heart is more devious than any other thing. And is depraved. Yes. It is depraved. Who can pierce its secrets? Yes. I, Yahweh, search the heart, test the motives. That's why when God sees human being, Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, he was deeply regretting because human hearts are full of evil. And this is the state of our soul. And we say we are good. We have everything. That's what we are going to read from Revelation chapter 3, verses 17 to 21. And what the Lord is speaking to each one of us. Revelation 3, verses 17 to 21. Never realizing that you are wretchedly and pitiably poor and blind and naked too. Never realizing that you are wretchedly and pitiably poor and blind and naked too. Are we realizing this fact? Are we naked? Are we blind in our spiritual life? When the Holy Spirit comes, we will re realize what we are. And we'll continue that reading. I warn you. I warn you. Buy from me the gold that has been tested in the fire. That's why St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, we all have beautiful spiritual eyes. And we should use that to experience and see our Lord. And we should see ourselves and realize what we are. Luke chapter 16, verse 15 says, we are justifying ourselves in front of the human being. But Lord knows, Lord knows what we are. Luke 16, verse 15. He said to them, You are the very ones who pass yourselves off as upright in you people's very, sight. You, yes, you pass, you are upright. But? But God knows your hearts. But God knows your heart. Nothing is hidden from him. That's why Samus, in his experience, he was telling in Psalm 139. He was trying to hide many places, but he couldn't. If I go to the mountain, he's there. If I go into the deep of the sea, he's there. Nothing is hidden from him. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12 and 13, the word of God pierces into our heart and everything will come out today or tomorrow. Everything will come out from the, from the heart. We cannot hide anything from our Lord. So that's why God is inviting, giving us opportunity to repent, to realize what we are, and confess your sin. Our Lord is ready to forgive if you are ready to confess the sin. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18 to 20, our Lord is inviting, come to me. Confess your sins. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18 to 20. Come, let us talk this over, says Yahweh. Yes. Though your sins are like scarlet. Whatever sins we have committed in our life, our Lord says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. They shall be white as snow. Though moment, they are red as crimson, yes. they shall be like wool. Yes, one moment is enough. The moment when we decide to confess our sins, we will experience his mercy and forgiveness. Psalms 32, Psalmist says, when he keep all his sin with him, within him, he was not able to do anything. But when the moment he took the decision, I will go and confess to my God, he experienced the mercy, the great mercy of our Lord. That's what our Lord is inviting each one of us. Confess your sins. And the Lord will never keep the record of our sins if we confess. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 says, no need to remember the past events. 
I am going to create a new heart, a new spirit. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 to 27. If you are ready to come back, our Lord is promising to each one of us, I shall pour clean water over you. What is that clean water? That's what you are listening from morning till evening. The word of God. I shall pour clean water you, over you and you will be cleansed. I shall cleanse you of all your filth. I shall cleanse you of all your filth. And of all your foul idols. And all of your foul ideals. We should find out what are the foul ideals we have kept in our heart. Our Lord is helping each one of us. Today is the time, my dear brothers and sisters, to come back to our Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Today is the time. This is the day, this is the very day God is inviting each one of us. Sirach chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. Do not keep it for tomorrow. This is the very moment. Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, and Hebrews chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I'll repeat. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, and Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. Do not harden your heart. Repent. Come back to the Lord with weeping, fasting, and call the name of God. Confess your sins. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. We will experience his mercy. He will experience his tremendous mercy and power. Our Lord is ready to forgive our sins. Again, Isaiah chapter 44, verses 22 says, how much our Lord is going to forgive all our sins. He never keeps. Again, Isaiah 44, verse 22. I have dispelled your acts of revolt like a cloud. It's like a cloud, Lord, removing all your sins. And your sins like a mist. Your sins like a mist. Come back to me, for I have redeemed you. Come back to me, I have redeemed you. Come back to me. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. The Lord says, Seek out Yahweh while he is still to be found. Yes, seek out Yahweh while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Call to him while he is still near. My dear brothers and sisters, the days are going to come. Our Lord is not to be with us. Because when we commit sin again and again, when, when we go back into the darkness, our Lord will be away from, from us. But this is the time our Lord is giving us the opportunity. Call to him while he is here. And our Lord is promising Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 to 20. If two or three gathers in my name, I am among you. I am in your midst. So our Lord is there in our midst. He knows what we are. The only thing our Lord is asking to each one of us to confess your sin through us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 19 to 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 19 to 22. The message of reconciliation. I mean, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not holding anyone's faults against them, but entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. This is a message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ. And St. Paul says we are ambassadors of Christ. That's what we are doing. We are the ambassadors of Christ. We are inviting each one of us. It is as though God were urging you through us. And in the name of Christ, we appeal to you. In the name of our Lord, we appeal to you. To be reconciled to God. To be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made the sinless one a victim for sin. Because our Lord died for each one of us on the cross. He suffered for each one of us, especially we, we meditate Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 to 7. He took all our sins on his body. And he suffered for each one of us. And our Lord is asking, come, I am ready to take all your sins. Why are you carrying, why are you living in the sin again? Our Lord is ready to take. So we were reading in Ezekiel chapter 36, I shall pour clean water over you and I will cleanse you. Then I will put my spirit in you. I will give a new heart. So this is what we need. This is what the retreat, accepting a new heart, a new life with our Lord. Very often we ask this question, 
in this modern world, how can we lead a holy life? Or how can we lead, uh, live according to the commandments of our Lord? But our Lord is promising to each one of us, if we are ready to listen to him, I will do it. You don't have to worry. Mark chapter 10, verse 27. For human, it is impossible. But nothing is impossible for our Lord. Believe in the word of God, my dear brothers and sisters. It is not any human word. It is our God's word. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. The same word spoken to our blessed mother. Nothing is impossible for God. Our life can be changed in a moment by the power of the word of God. We should believe that. If one word is enough. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. While St. Augustine, he was leading a sinful life, and Mother Monica was praying for him. Once he was hearing this word, Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. This is the time, my dear son, to change your life. This word made him a saint. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. We'll listen to that. Besides, you know the time has come. The moment is here for you to stop sleeping. And this, is, this word is speaking to each one of us. This is a time for each one of us, my dear brothers and sisters. The moment is here for you to stop sleeping and wake up. Because by now our salvation is nearer than when we first began to believe. The night is nearly over. Daylight is on the way. So let us throw off everything that belongs to the darkness. And the word of God says, let us throw off everything that belongs to the darkness and equip ourselves for the light. When we come deep, deeper into our life, we will realize many things still clings to us, many sinful inclinations, sinful activities. And our Lord is inviting each one of us to throw off and come back to, come back to me. Isaiah chapter 40, 52 verses 1 to 3. Shake off your dust and awake. Our Lord is inviting each one of us. Even if you are tired, again our Lord will give us the strength. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 27 to 31. Isaiah 40, 27 to 31. How can you say, Jacob, how can you repeat, Israel, my way is hidden from Yahweh, my rights are ignored by my Very God? Very often we say, our, eyes, our ways are ignored from, by the Lord. My ways are hidden from the Lord. But what Lord says? Did you not know? Had you not heard? Yahweh is the everlasting God. Yahweh is the everlasting God. Why we are wrong? Because we neither know the scripture know the power of God. Matthew chapter 22 verse 29 and Mark chapter 12 verse 24. Matthew 22 29 and Mark 12 24. Jesus says, you are wrong because we neither know the scripture nor the power of God. And again, our Lord spoke to Martha. Mark, uh, John chapter 11 verses 38 to 42. On the last of tomb. And Martha was doubting, Lord, this is the third day. How is it possible? The Lord replied, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. My dear brothers and sisters, in our life too, our Lord is speaking to each one of us. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. The last verse, he was totally decayed three days. After three days, if Lord can perform the miracle there, in our life too, our Lord can change our life. A moment is enough. A word is enough. Believe, my dear brothers and sisters. Nothing is impossible for God. Our life can be changed by believing in his name. So that we're sharing one word of God changed the life of St. Augustine. Augustine becomes St. Augustine. And again, if you look into the life of St. Francis of Francis Xavier, Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, that one word changed his life. If you gain the whole world, if you lose the soul, what is the use? In our life too, a word can change. That each and every word is powerful. When we accept this word of God with deep repentance and fear of God, our life will be changed. Isaiah chapter 66 verses 1 and 2. Our Lord is asking, all these things were made by me. What house could you make for me? And I will be, I am pleasing 
those who are contrite and humble in spirit, contrite heart and humble in spirit, and those who fear at me. When we approach him with a repentant heart, our Lord is pleasing to each one of us. Repentance, that's what our Lord is asking from each one of us. Complete change of our heart. And let us come out from our old way of life and be with our Lord. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 24. No more old way of life. Never go back into our old way of life, but repent and believe. Uh, so, we, we'll read from us 22 to 24. If you can write from Ephesians 4, 17 to 24. We'll read out from 22 to 24. You were to put aside your old self. You had to put aside your old way of life. Which belongs to your old way of life yes. and is corrupted by following illusory desires. Your mind was to be renewed in spirit. Your minds must be renewed in the spirit. So that you could put on the new man. Yes, that you will put on a new man. That is created on God's principles in the uprightness and holiness of the because truth. Because as we know, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we are created in the image of our Creator, image of our Lord. And when we committed sin, what happened? We have gone astray from our Lord. And again, our Lord is giving us an opportunity through our Lord Jesus Christ to regain that image. Again, Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 11. Our Lord is speaking to each one of us, come out from the old way of life. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 11. We'll listen to that. That is why you must kill everything in you. Yes, you must kill everything that is earthly in you. Sexual vice, impurity. Sexual vice, impurities. Uncontrolled passion. Uncontrolled passions. Evil desires, evil desires and especially greed especially greed all these kinds of sins which is the same thing as worshiping a false god it is precisely these things which draw god's retribution upon those who resist and these things made up your way of life when you were living among such people but now you must also give up all these things and now you must also give up all these things. Human anger. Human anger. Hot temper. Hot temper. Malice. Yes. Abusive language. Abusive languages. And dirty talk. Dirty talk. Everything should be thrown out. And do not lie to each other. Do not lie to each other. You have stripped off your old behavior with your old self. Yes. And and you have put on a new self and you have to put on a new self which will progress towards true knowledge and m- the more it is renewed in the image of its creator more in the image of our creator so we should come again to the image of our creator so that's what our lord is inviting each one of us to change our life complete change john the baptist says in matthew chapter 3 verses 1 to 7, the bear fruit according to the repentance. So bear fruit. We need real repentance. That is from the heart. The change should happen in our heart. That's what our Lord is inviting each one of us. We heard the story of prodigal son. When he realized he has done something wrong, he came back to the father and confessed, I have sinned. When we confess our sins, when we acknowledge our sins, we will experience His mercy. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 10. If we say we have no sin, we are liars. But if we acknowledge and confess, we will experience His mercy. And that's what all saints did. Saint Peter, the first Pope, Luke chapter 5, verse 8, when he met Jesus, he cried, Lord, go away from me, I am a sinful man. And we will we'll see in Saint Peter's life, Throughout his life, he proclaimed the faith. And after that, he denied Jesus three times. And again, Matthew chapter 26, verses 75, when he met Jesus again, and he realized he has done something wrong. He has, he cried bitterly from the heart. That's what the word of God says, Matthew 26, verse 75. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said. 
before the cock crows you will have disowned me three times and he went outside and wept bitterly he went out and bitterly that's a real repentance this is what we need my dear brothers and sisters in our lives confess our sins to the lord cry from the heart our lord is near to the broken hearted psalms 34 verses 17 to 19 our lord is near to the broken hearted and psalm 51 verse 17 also says this is what our lord is pleasing if you act, approach with a broken heart that's a real repentance that same peter that same saint peter again our lord is asking john chapter 21 verses 15 to 19 we heard in the beginning our lord never asked him why did you, why did you do this but he is asking do you love me this is what our heavenly father is asking when we come back to our lord and confess our sins our lord will not ask why did you do, do this but our lord is asking do you love me more than this my dear brothers and sisters out of our love of god let us confess our sins acknowledge our sins come back to the lord with complete repentance our lord is ready to forgive all our sins again saint paul says in 1 timothy chapter 1 verses 15 and 16 i am the greatest sinner in the world he also confessed and all the prophets they confess isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 5 prophet isaiah says i am a person of unclean lips he was confessing sin his sins in our life too we should confess our sins to the lord we will experience his mercy he is ready to forgive all our sins he never keeps a record of our sins psalm 130 verses 1 to 6 and psalm 103 verses 7 to 16 says from the east to west he ne- he forgive our sins that much far he never keep it he forgives all our sins so what we all should do is confess our sin repent from the heart the real repentance should come from within from the heart because our lord knows our heart nothing is hidden from him so when you open our heart completely to the lord we will experience his mercy that's what revelation chapter 3 verses 19 to 21 says i am knocking at the door if anybody is ready to open we will come and abide my dear brothers and sisters let us close our eyes for a moment